Welcome, everybody. Once again, we're here at the Amy Barn. As always, I'm joined by my good friends, Johnny Waite, Sephra Alexander, and my friend and Ra, boss. Alexandra. Alexandra. And my really good friend, Alexandra. <laughs> and my uh, boss, Joe DeSantis. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> a boss. Well, well, we'll see. We've we got uh, Marion and uh, Andrea behind the camera with us today. This podcast is going to really kind of take your breath away, I think, here. This is uh, Travis Roy, who's got an amazing story to tell. Um, and this is, this is, again, one of these kind of emotional ones. This is a guy who um, could be crying about himself, could be crying about his circumstances. He's in a wheelchair. He's a paraplegic. And yet he's got a force of will and, and a mindset just to carry on. And I think when you hear him speak, well, you, you did the interview. Uh, I find him to be an amazing guy. I was so. having a really tough day, as most days are in sure. business. And I walked downstairs and I sat with him. And within two and a half seconds, I said, I can't complain about anything. And when you just said, hey, we're going to be talking Travis Roy, I just said, I can't complain about anything. Wait until you see this. This is a game changer. <laughs> We are here for Spartan Up Podcast. We are in Boston on a whirlwind trip, and we are with Travis Roy. And um, our trusted camera person behind the camera, Marion, suggested that we should have interviewed Travis first because he's got all the good tips. Uh, I've learned a little bit over the years. <laughs> the other thing, I, you know, I, I'm having a bad day. I, um, and I don't typically have bad days, and I'm not supposed to complain because we go out to the audience, we say there's nothing to ever complain about. But... Um, and I meet you, and you're such an inspirational story. And I'm like, you know what? I got nothing to complain about. It's all relative. I'm now having a good day. It's all relative. It's all right. relative. Yes. So, so um, talk to me. Go, go back in time. Um, yeah. You had, you had an injury. What happened? So let me start a little bit before that, if you don't mind. I, um, so I, I grew up in Maine. Uh, I'm, uh, 20, my dad, when I was first born, he managed a local ice arena. Uh, 20 months old, he, he found a pair of skates small enough to fit on my feet. And, uh, uh, and from that day on, it was, it was something fun to do. And... Shortly thereafter, it, it, it wasn't long before it became a passion. And uh, uh, so I, uh, 15 years old, I, I, I went to lots of summer camps and, and, uh, and at those you, camps. You were hockey, hockey through and through. No, you know what? I, I took a lot of pride in being a well-rounded kid. So I played all kinds of different sports. Got it. Soccer, tennis, lacrosse. I enjoyed art. I, uh, I, I what were you great at? Hockey. And hockey great was my hockey. thing. Hockey is what gave me my confidence. But you had a shotgun approach. Your parents had a shotgun approach. Go, go do everything. They, yeah, they did, and, and I, you know, I'm a big fan of that. I'm an advocate for that at this point. But uh, um, so at those camps, they were always talking about setting goals, and I, I didn't really think much of it until uh, my freshman year in high school. And I, and I literally went into my bedroom, sat down at my desk, wrote out all these goals, and predominantly hockey goals. And uh, uh, and at, at 15 years old, I, I knew what I wanted to do. I knew where I, where I wanted to go. I. Uh, uh, and, and, you know, my three dream goals, what I refer to them as. And first one was I want to play college hockey. I want to earn a Division One college scholarship. Uh, secondly, I want to play in the NHL, and I thought, I don't want to sell myself short. And I, bottom of the line, I, I want to play on the U.S. Olympic hockey team. And, uh, and I uh, kind of devoted myself to that and uh, did the right things to the point where I uh, uh, had lots of scholarship offers all around the country to Michigan or Maine and and uh, finally opted to, to go to Boston University, defending national champions. And uh, you know, they were they were kind of the premier hockey program in the country at the time. And and uh, it was it was all all a dream come true. And, uh, my very first game, my very first shift. Uh, two minutes of the game, we scored, and uh, the uh, the old Walter Brown Arena at Boston University it was a lot of energy in there, and I was pretty pretty excited, pretty amped up. And uh, they dropped the puck, and we won the face off, and. Puck got dumped into the offensive zone. I, I just skated in there as fast as I could, and opposing defenseman picked up the puck, and I thought I'd deliver a big check and kind of make my presence known. And, and I, I, I may have been a little kind of, well, probably on the edge, maybe a little past the edge, and uh, and I just didn't hit him as squarely as I'd hoped, and I deflected off him, and and I uh, went head first in the dashboards and uh, burst my fourth and fifth cervical vertebrae, and. So the, the dream, the, the goal that I'd worked at for the first 20 years of my life was, uh, I lived it for 11 seconds, but I could say they're the left, best 11 seconds of my life. Yeah. Uh, but I also knew, uh, as I was laying on that ice face down and 
seeing the my, my warm breath start to melt melt the puddle on the ice that uh that I was in big trouble and uh and my life was more or less over as I knew it. Um and uh from then on, you know, it was six months in the hospitals and lots of challenges. And uh, How do you pick yourself up from that? I mean, there are people out there right now listening or watching, right? Um, or me this morning, I said I had, I had a bad day. And, and they're, um, they're complaining or they're upset about something. And how do you get through it? My, uh, my, my, one of my fundamental motivating factors in life is, is, is just my, my, my sense of pride. Um, but at that moment, or the next week, or two weeks, or a month? Uh, at first, it, it had a lot more to do with the people around me, my parents, my sister. Uh, I, I, I just I couldn't give up for them. Uh, uh, not only did I not want to give up, but I wanted to, uh, you know, I, I mean, I didn't know what I wanted. I, it's such a tough time, those, those first weeks and months, and you just don't know what kind of life you're going to be in a live. I mean, I, I kind of assumed I'd spend the rest of my life kind of living in an attachment on my parents' house, and, uh, and, and there wouldn't be much quality of life. And, uh, but, uh, but I love my parents. I love my sister. And, and I had good friends, and I just, I knew I, I knew I couldn't give up. I think it was more for them initially than it was for me. And, uh, sure. Um, and, uh, and, I, and I was, I had a unique situation. that The accident was on TV. It was, it was a lot of publicity. There were people that made, uh, Little sacrifices, letters from you know, ten-year-old uh, boys who donated you know, ten dollars just so I could, uh, yeah. you know, to help make my life a little bit easier. There and uh, people made big sacrifices. There was a couple that planned uh, their their honeymoon down to uh, Australia, and they opted to forgo the honeymoon and and, and send in check to me to help me cover my um, cost of living for the rest of my life. And, and there were a lot of little sacrifices, and then. Uh, so really, the, the, it's a fortunate piece to my story. For the last 21 years, um, I've just felt like people are rooting for me. And when you wake up every day and, uh, and you kind of feel that, it's, uh, it's an added bonus. But, but in, uh, the bottom line, though, is it, is it does come back to just my own little kind of sense of pride. And I, not letting to let myself down, not letting to let my family down, not letting to let those strangers down that have, that have supported me. And, and I... I don't know that I'll ever accept this injury, but I, uh, I've always kind of committed to myself that I'd, I'd make the best of it. Yeah, that's a great way to look at it. Is, um, yeah, I can't complain. I can't complain, right? I mean, one moment, it's almost like uh, I, wanna, we, I have four children, and I wanna, I'm listening to you, and I want to teach the kids. Um, it's one moment, right? It's, it's, you, it was that one moment on the ice hitting the, hitting the panel in the wrong direction. Yeah, no, it, it was. So but uh, I, I uh, kind of my, and I, and I do some talking to different groups, and uh, I always kind of refer to, I get, I get a little theme that I, I talk about. It's sort of, uh, there's, there, there's times in our life when we choose our challenges, kind of set our goals, and we kind of plan our lives, and, and there's other times when the challenges simply choose us. Yeah. And uh, sort of. That is a great you. saying. <laughs> 300 interviews, there and you we go. got. Yeah, you but, choose your challenges at times, and sometimes the challenges yeah, choose you. And it, and it is. It's what we do in the face of those challenges that really defines who we are, and and more importantly, who we can and will become. And uh, and um, as I say, I spent the first twenty years choosing my challenges, set my goals. It was fun to kind of feel like you're in control of everything, and uh, uh, but uh, that's generally not how the way life goes. Or yeah. you do more often than not, uh, you know, there are some significant challenges that choose you, and uh, but. Uh, but it was, you know, the values that I used to kind of earn my scholarship and kind of get to where I was at with my hockey career. And you know, slowly I figured out it was going to be the same values that, that would help me figure this one out as well. Hey, you're going to definitely want to join us next week. Our guest is Jesse Itzler. And if you've ever wanted to figure out how to make your life more interesting and bring different people in for different perspectives, this guy does it in spades. He invited a Navy SEAL to live with him. He traveled and spent time with the monks. You're going to want to see everything this guy has to say. Really, really interesting stuff. So to see everything that we have to say, subscribe on iTunes or YouTube and we'll see you each week. Join us. So you were saying you want to start to spend more time making money and less time having fun. Oh, <laughs> not quite. Uh, no, and, and it's not necessarily, well, just sometimes we focus too much on kind of making money and, uh, and not enough time 
kind of making our happiness and uh and and this society is spinning so damn fast and uh trying to get control of it and trying to kind of maintain that focus and uh um so that's uh something i'm I'm trying to figure out sort of my own in, in my personal life and uh and and just realizing that boy it's it's that it's a simple thing it's a sitting around a fire pit with some buddies you know it's uh going out and just having a nice dinner or, um you know it's uh it's just trying to slow it down trying to create those moments that are real where the conversations go beyond you know how are you doing how's work how's the kids sure you know to just get to that next level i, I just i feel like uh this society's sucking that out of us that we don't even know how to do it anymore well, you I mean you look, you go anywhere, whether it's a restaurant or fire pit or anywhere, and it's and we do it right, and you're sitting there typing to each other. Yeah, the technology, the technology certainly, uh, uh, it's 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 become a daily. We think it's priority, but it really isn't. I'm going to do a whole video series um, at some point. I was supposed to do it in January, where I smash my phone and my computer and completely disconnect. Can you imagine how good that would feel? Oh, it's going to be great. Maybe uh, I'll light it on fire. Uh, uh, however you do it, but I. I uh, I just, it's funny these little gifts that uh, sometimes I realize it kind of came with this injury. I, I can't literally go pick up my telephone. It's you're great. Like, you're I, can't, I can't. You're you know, I, I can't be thumbing through it and looking at my uh, Facebook or any of that other stuff. And yeah, it is. I'm, I'm, I'm glad. You know, I, I can't take it out and put it on the table at a restaurant. You know, yeah. like everybody's doing. And I, I just. So, anyways. Let's talk about the foundation. Your foundation. D- yeah, real, real quick. Um, so, I was, after my injury, there was. Just a lot of goodwill. Uh, There's money raised for me. I had great insurance and uh, good family. And uh, and when you're in that on that rehab floor and you see the other families going through it, and you realize that uh, some of those people don't have any of those things, or you know don't have insurance, cover bills. And so anyway, so my family started the foundation. Two things: one to raise money for research. Kind of hopeful, you know. I was hopeful that's a bad walk again. I I don't know if that's going to happen, but I, I do think there's some some therapies and breakthroughs that that'll come that'll make me more independent. Um, and then secondly, we, we purchased adaptive equipment grants uh, uh, for individuals. So wheelchairs, voice-activated computers, simple home modifications. It's, it's pretty amazing what people can do with a disability if they've just got the right technology, the right equipment. So we, we provide those things, and uh, it's, uh, it's been a good thing. But it, it's, uh, it's growing, and it's kind of consuming me, and, uh, and I'm, uh, we're kind of hiring a full-time staff member and getting some office space. and. Love it. And gro- growth is fun, but but sometimes it's it comes at a cost. It does come at a cost. Yeah. Um, but uh, looking forward to the opportunities ahead with the. But you're doing good things, so so uh, you should grow, right, and get bigger and help yeah. more people. No, so I am looking forward to that. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> On the one hand. Yeah, that was right back yeah. at you. Yeah. <laughs> um, what do you recommend? Uh, there are people out there, like I said earlier, that are having a tough time getting motivated. That are saying to themselves, you know. I'm stuck in a relationship. I don't know if this is right for me. I can't get ahead. I wanted to get this extra job. I might start a business. How do you... You've got a couple of tips to uh, help people? I, I, I'm just a big... I'm a, I'm a big fan of realizing you have choices. You always have choices. And uh, and it's it's just sort of taking control of those those choices, re- realizing that, yes, yeah, sometimes you get to, you know, take a leap, take a risk. Uh, and... Uh, um, and, and again, one of the little pieces is, is just taking a moment to think, well, why, what does make you happy? You know, and I, I, I've, I've broken it down to three things. Uh, I enjoy, I, I just enjoy simple moments with my family and my friends. And, but, but in this society, you've got you to create those moments. You've got to create those times. Um, but uh, but every, uh, I, I enjoy good food. Uh, as a quadriplegic, trying to figure out ways to challenge myself and... Uh, uh, I, I do it through food. I love trying new foods. I love uh, all kinds of different ethnic food and uh, cooking, pulling recipes off the internet. And thirdly, I've, I've got a little cottage up in Vermont. And, uh, Where in Vermont? Uh, Colchester, Vermont, right okay. outside of Burlington. Yeah. And, uh, and it's my, my favorite place on earth to go, and that's where I get a little peace. That's where I kind of recharge. And, and uh, We know very much <laughs> about Vermont. We have a farm in Vermont. Okay. Marion's up the street. and uh, I love it. I think it's the greatest place in the world, aside from some... <laughs> quirky things about the state um, yeah uh, but you know literally rolling out on my deck with my shirt off feeling the warm sun on my shoulders watching yeah. the sailboats out on Lake Champlain it's you know those are the moments that I, that I crave and, and what I figured out is if I've included one or more of those things in my day well it's just a conversation with a good conversation close friend, you know, good food and a sailboat and, 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 and just any time spent in Vermont yeah. and uh, so I uh, 
I, I, call, I call my quality of life goals. Um, yeah, I've got career goals. Yeah, I've got other goals. But, but the ones that are probably most important are those quality of life goals. And, uh, yeah. and those are the three things for me. And I, and I try to um, hold them close. I try to keep them at the top of my priority list. And uh, Do you ever, one of the tricks I do for myself to get through and push through tough times, tough days, is I say, uh, well, it could be worse. I, do, you, I, do you do that? I play that game all the time. And all, all, I, uh, uh, all I do is, you know, you, you look at my, simply my injury level. I mean, I'm a C4, 5 quadriplegic guy. Uh, damn, if I could, if I just had my left arm, you know, I could probably drive. I'd be able to move both my arms. But thank God I'm not at C2 or C3 and I'm stuck on a ventilator. Right. And uh, so I, I, I always realize that there are people much worse than I am. That I am, all I got to do is turn on the news and see the refugees, all, you know, from Syria and Afghanistan and then some of the different issues going on around the world. And uh, uh, it doesn't. Because I think, like, you know, the, the classic uh, saying of the glass is half full or the glass is half, dem- half empty. And so I think you should look at life. This is my opinion, I, I want your opinion. You should look at life like the glass is half full, right? And there's all this opportunity and all these great things to do. But but reflect that the glass could be half like things could be worse. It's true, but I, I know that's it's interesting. Come on, I I I, uh, I think if we're honest with ourselves, that more often than not, that glass is pretty full. Yeah, um, you know, that's when, a, we, when we three hundred yeah. interviews, the <laughs> glass is pretty full. Another one, you know. Yeah, you know, I, 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 <laughs> You know, again, I mean, I, it's not half empty or half full. It's full. It, it, the glass is full. It, it, it really it's is. overflowing. It's not even close. I mean, absolutely. If you're living in this country and and, and you've got your health and uh, your 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 glass you're is pretty, overflowing, yeah. and, uh, it's um, a big glass. It, it, it is a big glass, and uh, and it's just you know it, uh, the other thing that uh, again that's gotten me through this. Um, I continuously have a sense of of being grateful. Um, and, uh, and I know there's books in this But that grateful is coming from, again, reflecting back and saying, well, I could be living in Syria. Uh, uh, absolutely. Right? And it's also just, you know, i got two parents, happily married, healthy. I mean, right. how fortunate is that? I've got an incredible, you know, my sister. Gratitude's my, powerful, right? Th- 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 yeah, I mean, there's, they're doing more and more studies on that. And it's, yeah. You know, it's, 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 uh, it's, it's certainly proven to be, be true. And I, and, I, uh, and I think sort of that, that pride, the gratitude, kind of my, the outlook on kind of, Facing the challenges of choose you, and also choosing my challenges, and realizing I had a choice, and in, 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 in a lot of it, and uh, it, uh, yeah, it, it, I, sometimes I think even in being in this wheelchair, I look at the people around me, and I, and I do have to sit, I do have to watch, I do have to, you know, it's a unique perspective, and a lot of times I look at people and I think, God, I think I'm happier than a lot of those able-bodied yeah, people. No, no doubt that, about it. Um, so it's kind look of at, look at all the people that. Um take their own lives and they're on top of the world as far as, you know, economically and so forth. And, yeah, no, right? absolutely. Or don't take care of the body they have. <laughs> or don't take care of the body they have. Right? Yeah, That's, yeah. yeah. Well, and the thing that I love about what you do, and, and I'll be honest, I, I, I miss competing. Mm-hmm. I, I miss competing. And, uh, you know, the clock, the, you know, the, the, the clock never lies, you know. I, clock I, never lies. I, Another yeah. one. <laughs> You know, it's it's there. You know, you know whether you're making progress. You know whether you're falling back. Uh, I miss competing. I, uh, you know, I'll find myself literally just watching, you know, the women's NCAA softball tournament. I love watching people compete. You know, and just that 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 uh, seeing that that uh, thrill of of victory. You know, the whole, whole wild world, wild world of sports. You know, saying the thrill of victory, the agony of defeat. And, and I'll find just tears rolling down my cheeks just watching people get to experience that. And uh, and I, I I miss it. I, uh, Where do you live? How far from here? Uh, I, I live, I uh, spend a lot of time in Boston, spend a lot of time in Vermont, I spend a lot of time down in Florida, actually. So Got it. Uh, I get it. Get you it. just happen to be in town? Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm around for, yeah. So this is where the, the Travis Wright Foundation is based out of. So Got it. I do a lot, that, uh, a lot with that here in Boston. I want to, I, I don't know, um, well, anyway. That was awesome. Let's wrap it up. All right. El- elbow bump. Uh, give it to me. There we go. <laughs> um, Thank you. Really and, and again, it. people want to find out more. TravisRoyFoundation.org. Be great. You don't donate. We show up at your house uh, with a black van and uh, throw you right. into a, I don't know, we'll do yeah. something with them. Good. And uh, I appreciate the time. This has been fun. It's good.
All right, so what did you guys think? Was it everything I told you it was going to be? And yeah. so. Was it with you that so- Silence. I mean, unbelievable, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Unbelievable. Absolutely. I think yeah. uh, his whole concept of 11 seconds changing the entire course of your life just really makes you well, it's, stop and have pause and have a lot of gratitude well, and look at... Look at the, you know, just the, the way he conducts and lives his life. Well, I think it's a powerful story. When he, oh. he's sitting there and he's, he's, he's walking you through and he's telling you he likes, he used to play hockey and all this kind of stuff. But you're kind of looking at him, you're trying to figure out, okay, at what level or whatever. And you say, I mean, he's playing at college level hockey at Division One on the, you know, and he got um, scholarships to the best schools in the country for hockey. And his first shift on the ice and he goes out and then they had the video of him laying there. I mean, I was, when I was watching it, they just, it, it, it was crushing. As a viewer, you know, can imagine. But, so we should appreciate every every moment. You appreciate every moment. You can't complain about anything. Period. End the story. Right. Well, yeah. but but also to look at. Um, I mean, that he's not the only person that's ever happened to. And some people are out there being interviewed for podcasts because they're inspiring people and making a difference in the world. And other people aren't. And uh, so, you know, life is going to happen. Um, you know, it's going to be a car accident. It's going to be a, a disease that you have no control over. It's going to be a situation like that. But then, what are you going to do with it? And, um, and, you know, they, they say that what happens to you isn't what's going to determine the quality of your life. It's what you do with it. Obstacles have everyone's address. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. I right. heard that. I just made it up. Trademark. <laughs> <laughs> said, what slide did you take that on? That was nice. No, no, but, but ab- absolutely yeah. right. Stuff, stuff is going to happen. And, um, and like so, when you came up to the Spartan office. Oh, like so, so uh, what you don't know and you didn't see on the film was when the interview was over, I was so excited and so inspired that I said, you got to come up five stories and you got to come into the Spartan office. We've got 100 people in there. They've got to meet you. Oh, yeah, no problem. So I went up the stairs and I was getting him set in the freight elevator. And when I got upstairs, they said, wait a minute, you can't bring him in the freight elevator. I said, ridiculous. We're getting him in the freight elevator. We're making space. Get everything out. Remove the fire exit. We're getting him in. They were right, because I got him in, and then the elevator broke. And so he was stuck on our floor for close to five hours. But he didn't complain. That's he didn't amazing. complain about anything. And it was fantastic for the group at Spartan to really see what, what, uh, how powerful this guy is and that mindset is. Yeah, yeah and you know, you know what else I really like to think? Um, uh, looking on his website and stuff, he has... Um, I think it's like 15 or 16 tips for non-wheelchair people, right? Just like some etiquette around that. And um, I think that's really important. You know, it's saying like, don't talk over their heads to the caregivers and not acknowledge them. Like, don't just touch them or their wheelchair. It's an extension of their body. Like all these, all these different types of things. I mean, he's been at the forefront of leading um, spinal cord injury research and has really done massive amounts for raising grant money and doing research in, in that in that whole sector. But also just like a general awareness because because it's something that people aren't familiar with or know how to really conduct themselves in society. And it's, it's really important to have someone with such good spirit be able to say, like, let's normalize this and then have a conversation around it. When you meet people like this, it really, it really does kind of just, it, it makes you reevaluate yourself, right? So um, and one, of the other, one of the other interviews we did uh, um, that, that hasn't aired yet, we were talking about a, uh, an SF soldier named Romy Camargo, who was very similar to this, um, and shot in the neck, paralyzed, thought he was going to die in Afghanistan. They brought him back. I mean, he's full paraplegic, on a board, trouble speaking, can't move anything. Through his, wasn't ever going to walk again, wasn't going to talk, all those kinds of things, through his own force of will and personality. Somehow he, he flew with his own money to Europe to do stem cell research and everything else, came back. Anyway, one thing has led to another. He now owns and operates a, a, a rehab center in Tampa for paraplegics that he runs from his wheelchair, having other people learn how to walk and rehab and stuff. Wow. And he's, he's the only wow. owner operator in the country. So he's very, he reminds me very much of Travis Roy. And mm-hmm. Their circumstances are different, but, but where they ended up are the same and, and how they've just not let that destroy their lives and you know, how they've taken that, what's happened to them to kind of create their life, if you will. Uh, and they're really amazing people. Well, and, and the other great thing about that is not just create their life, and this is something that we see a lot in, in the people interview, right? to impact others, right. exactly, to find a purpose greater than themselves. And so it's not just how can I recover from this, it's how can I use this to actually go out and make a difference in the world. And that's, that's incredible. When you look at the average person who has all the capacities and all the abilities in the world, gets up in the morning and thinks, how can I get through my day? 
You know, how with all the, the, the misfortune life is going to heap on me as in life isn't going to heap on me because you have every advantage. But, but the average person gets up and they just look at how am I going to get more for me today? And here are people who have learned through hardship that not only do they still have enough, but they have extra capacity. And that's, that's so, so powerful. So, you know, I hope that's something that people get by watching this podcast is that it isn't enough to get up and think, what can I do for me today? You know, you have all these people who have experienced disadvantages that you haven't even experienced, and they're getting up in the morning saying, what can I do for other people? So I, I just, it's funny, I want to personally challenge every watcher, every listener to look at your own life exactly where you are right now and say, how can I go out and make a positive impact in the world for others? And I think you'll find that your life will expand drastically just like it has for people like Travis no, Roy. No doubt about it. Thank you for watching another epic story of success. If you like our message, please share Spartan Up with your friends and subscribe on iTunes, YouTube, or wherever you catch our show, maybe in the woods. Spartan Up is brought to you by Spartan Race. To find a race near you, visit Spartan.com. 